It's really common to have multiple navigations on any given page these days, whether that's your main navigation at the top of the page and a different navigation down in the footer, or maybe it's even the same navigation in the footer, uh, or it could be that there's a secondary navigation for different sections, almost like a table of contents or something like that within a page. The thing is, if you do have multiple navs on your page, there's a few little gotchas that you might not even be aware of. And I wanna look at what those are in this video, as well as the super, super easy fix that you can put in place to stop any issues from arising. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to yet another video. I'm very glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials, usually on the wonderful world of CSS. But today we're looking at some HTML. We're gonna be talking about semantics. We're gonna be talking about area, which often scares people, and a little bit more. So let's dive into this example that we can see on the screen right now, where I have multiple navigations. Now, this is a very contrived example, but we're gonna look at some actual real examples along the way as well instead of this but I think this will help illustrate how we can actually play with the code a little bit and you'll notice here I have a navigation here and I have another navigation right there so let's go just take a quick look I have my nav here and then another nav over here now these nav elements they are the correct semantic html to be using for this and the nav element is a semantic html element but what what does that even mean really and it's actually not just about making it easy for us to know what this element should be when we're looking at the HTML, but it actually carries a lot of meaning to it. And the nav is actually a really important one because it's one of the few landmark regions that we have. Now landmark regions actually existed before HTML5 did with our semantic code. And we would use the role attribute to be able to apply the different things like you could do a role of navigation or a role of footer and things like that but when they brought in html5 with our semantic html elements like our nav and our footer and our aside and these different things like that some of those semantic html tags or elements come with the role built into it and navigation is one of them and this is one of the reasons why it's really important to be using semantic html and not just throwing divs everywhere because there's a lot more embedded meaning in using the right things than you might actually realize and i keep saying landmark regions we're going to see a little bit of what they are but if you really want to see why landmark regions are super important I'd strongly encourage checking out the video that you can actually see on the screen right now by Leonie Watson she does a much better job of explaining what they are and why they're so important than I could so go check out that video if you're curious and again it's linked in the description uh, but let's let's keep on going with this and seeing how this actually affects us what we're doing now so to be able to explore this properly what I'm going to do is I've, I've opened narrator on my computer now which is why we have the headphones on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to here where I have the same code pen Never. you can see it's reading it out to me and what the narrator does is it's a screen reader and it's one of the more basic ones it's built into Windows there's voiceover on Mac if you want to test it out uh, and then there's a few other more common ones that people use uh, JAWS being one of them and they come with a whole bunch of shortcuts. And you'll notice one of the shortcuts I can push is D, which will let me jump, and that's for a narrator specifically. Um, I don't know about the other screen readers, but if I push D here, it's gonna go to a landmark. Banner landmark. And the banner landmark is your header. And then if I push D again, it's gonna go to the next landmark, which is my navigation. Navigation landmark. And then if I push D again, it should go to my next navigation. Main landmark. Oh, the main, I forgot about that. And navigation then- Navigation landmark. Navigation landmark. And the issue with this is, and while it is telling people that there are different navigations there, it doesn't tell them that they're actually different. It says that we're on a navigation. So there's no real way of knowing that these are different uh, navigations. So what I'm gonna do for now is we're gonna turn off narrator. Narrator dialog. Okay, exiting narrator. And we're gonna come back to here and make a quick change where I'm gonna come on this nav and I'm gonna give this an area label. And the area label is going to be primary navi navigation. And then we can take a area label on this one. And we could do the same thing where we can go in area label. And let's just do secondary for fun on this one. Uh, if I save this code pen and then let's go over here and refresh. And so let's do that again where I'm going to push D. Primary navigation, navigation landmark. And notice how it actually tells me that's my primary navigation. And then I can come Main over landmark. to secondary navigation navigation landmark 
And so we get that area label being read out to us. And that is what we want to do. And one really important thing is you don't actually have to do this for every time you have more than one navigation. I'm going to talk about that in a second, but I want to show one uh, use case where this is actually an action, which, which is a really good place to go and start learning a little bit more about accessibility if you don't already know about it. But let's try this out here. So let's hit D. Black Lives Banner Landmark Primary Navigation Landmark. So there we have our primary navigation landmark. And I know there's a secondary one on here. So I'm going to push D a few times until we get to the next one. Main landmark. Table of contents, navigation landmark. And there we go. So there's the secondary one, which is the table of contents navigation landmark. And this table of contents is exactly what it says it is. It's a table of contents that goes through different things that are on this main page, but it's navigating within this page rather than being one that navigates through other pages like we have at the top here. So it's just a nice way of seeing this actually in action. And as I said off the top though, just one thing that's important to know is if you link. do have, and Skip let's just content, turn link. this off, um, but if you do have a navigation like this on your site where you can you know, navigate between stuff, and then you might have a secondary navigation in the footer, th this to me isn't actually a navigation, and I wouldn't use a nav on this for my social links. This is just a UL for me because it's listing out the different things, different places where you can find me online. So I do think having that is an important distinction. Navigation should really be about navigating through your own site, whether that's through an individual page or through secondary, like going through your main navigation, which goes through different pages. But often you get those really big navs in a footer that sort of have a, a bigger site map than the main one. So that could be a good reason to use a secondary navigation. But one thing that's really important, I'm gonna take this off now because we're not gonna listen to that anymore. But if you have two navigations that are the same, so if I had this navigation up here, and I'm actually repeating it. So we can do this all in the dev tools. And let's just make them a little bit bigger so we can see things. We don't actually need this. And let's say I had my main primary nav here and you can even copy that in your dev tools. And then I can come down to my footer and inside my footer, we can paste the nav in there. And if we go and take a look, we can see now I have my navigation here as well as my navigation up here. This one doesn't look very good because I had some as styles associated with it. But uh, if you did this where you have two navigations that are exactly the same, the, all the links are identical, either you don't need to have a different name on them because they are the same thing. When it reads out that landmark region and it says it's a navigation, if the only navigations you have are identical, then that's fine because the people assume that they're identical because there's not a secondary name read out. Or let's say you did something like where they have a main navigation, they have this secondary one, but then down in the footer, uh, maybe they have the same one that they had up here, just, you know, that type of thing where you get the same navigation in two places. You'd want to give both of those the same name because the two navigations are identical to one another, even though they're located at different places on the page. And one thing you might have noticed is on my page and on this one, uh, when the when the voiceover started, there was this skip content. Uh, that popped up and if you don't know what that is, this is there for accessibility reasons. It's really easy to integrate and it should be there on most websites. There are times where you don't need one, but most websites do need one. And if you wanna know how you can implement one, I have a video for you right here that looks more into why they're important and also how we can add one to our own site. Don't forget about Leoni Watson's video that I've put down in the description below. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Jan, Johnny, Stuart, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.